Justin here and welcome to today's video. The last time that we talked, I introduced five reasons why the Line 6 Helix has an edge over traditional analog pedal board systems. And in this video, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to give five reasons why an analog pedal board has an edge over multi-effect systems like the Line 6 Helix. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I'm not trying to bash one or the other. What I'm really trying to say is that it really depends on your context and your situation. Both types of gear are equally valid and they are not better than the other. It's just different. Kind of like how um, some guys like to drive manual cars, some others like to drive automatic cars, and there may be pros and cons of both, but both types of cars, you would admit, get from destination A to B. So let's go through these reasons step by step and hopefully by the end of it, you will have a balanced view as to which system might be for you. Ultimately, you want to play with the gear that makes you feel better and makes you uh, approach the guitar better than you, uh, you know, you don't want to fight with your gear to get a good sound out of it. Reason number one, there's a hobby side to analog pedals that you just don't get with the Helix. The Helix is um, a set form factor. Once you get it, that's it. There's no changing pedals in and out. There's no changing of gear at all. You're stuck with that particular form factor. But in the case of analog pedals, you can always buy new gear. You can always change out your, uh, your system um, components. And for the hobbyists out there, it's really cool to own a piece of history. So those are the guys who derive pleasure from collecting a vintage 70s Electro Harmonics Deluxe Memory Man. I still think that's a pretty cool delay pedal. And I've owned an authentic 1970s Deluxe Electric Mistress, the flanger. Even though it needed its own giant brick of a power supply to get it working, it really did add some vintage vibe and I got some police tones out of it. It's really cool, I love that piece of kit. I sold it off because I needed to fund my other pedals. I know of guys who are boss pedal enthusiasts, so they have different versions of the same pedal, like the DS1 from Taiwan or the DS1 that's made in Japan, and each of these, you know, a silver screw versus a black screw. These are the things that you don't get with multi-effect systems. You buy a unit, that's it. That's all you have. Plus, I think there is a very social side of being an analog gear enthusiast. You, have, you just need to look at the forums to see how passionate people can be about gear and people start exchanging ideas and exchanging conversations all about you know a particular pedal and, and these are the conversations that that may not necessarily be very active from the multi-effect side of things i could be wrong let me know in the comment section Number two is non-limited creativity. I was very careful to phrase it this way. I wanted to say unlimited creativity, but I realized that we do have a limit on our funding and the amount of money in our bank. So it's non-limited creativity. If your needs change, if your needs evolve over time, your pedal board evolves with you. You can always change out a pedal, sell it off, and fund the next purchase. I'm going to caveat quite strongly here. Your sense of what you need versus what you want gets better only with time and experience. What I mean by that is this, you only really know what you want when you are crossing the you know, five, six year mark of playing guitar. And before that, you're kind of just fumbling around and trying to get a grasp of who you are as a player. So if you're a new player, don't sink in tons of money into getting gear. Get something that is good for you at the moment, or something that makes you inspired, something that makes you I uh, want to pick up the guitar and to practice. And once you practice, and once you know the nuances of your guitar, the nuances of your particular pedals, and then you realize the limitations of your pedals, then you can start to think, all right, now that I want to play in this direction, what kind of gear do I need to get there? And I want to encourage you um, musicians out there, uh, young ones, don't rush into buying pedals over and over again. I mean, you could be one of those guys who has a high socioeconomic status who can buy pedals at a, on a whim's notice, but most of us need to save up money for that. 
don't spend the money until you establish yourself as a musician and you figure out what is it you want to get out of your gear and seasoned musicians those of you in church who have been playing for years go and mentor alongside those younger than you go alongside those who are starting out hey um what's the sound you're looking for in your head you know i can i can give you some input as to how to get yourself you know in that proper kind of direction. There's always a opportunity for social interaction and for community in church. So musicians out there who are older musicians do walk alongside the younger ones. They will grow immensely because of your mentorship. three is what I'm going to call transferable utility and it's I don't mean to sound fancy but all that really means is once you buy the pedal that you want and you've replaced pedals on your board the pedal that comes off doesn't necessarily have to be sold right away in fact I've found that some pedals that I've taken off become used in different contexts and uh, they, they really do help in ways that I didn't think were possible until I uh, I got him off the board. So I'm going to give you an example. My Vox AC4 is a pretty loud amp even in a Singaporean apartment context. So I need to really lower those levels down. And to do that, I took the Boss GE7 to cut out the mids and I have a Boss LS2 that lowers the mass, it acts like a master volume to lower the volume all the way down to maybe a quarter or less than a quarter volume. So that way I'm able to plug into the amp and to have amp practice at home without having a fear of you know scaring the neighbors. Plus there's the advantage of having the Vox as a really clean pedal platform. So that's another plus. So don't be too quick to throw away or sell away your pedals first. You may actually have a need for them somewhere else along the way. Reason number four is component repair. In the previous video, I said that one of the more irritating things about analog pedal boards is that there are things that can mechanically go wrong and just die on you. Patch cables, power supply cables, power supplies. I was saying that that was a problem with analog pedals, but that's also a blessing in disguise. Now, imagine along with me, you have a Line 6 Helix. Um, and this actually happened to my second guitar player in my band. He has a Line 6 Helix LT, and as you know, the LT has the expression pedal that is made out of a plastic hinge or something. That hinge broke during practice, so he didn't have any way of engaging the wah or engaging volume with the rest of the practice. Now, he had to set in the whole unit to get that volume pedal replaced. Whereas, if you were playing in an analog pedal bar situation, if the volume pedal broke, you just need to take out the volume pedal and you you know you still have your other pedals to play with you don't you can make do without the volume pedal for that particular session now uh, if a patch cable breaks it's a you know ten dollar twelve dollar replacement it's not too bad consider if a warranty runs out on line six helix that pedal that particular expression pedal replacement can be pretty steep so component repair if something goes wrong with an analog pedal board system you can just replace the component uh, a lot more easily than with a multi-effect system. Reason number five, and I've kept this at the very last bit because it's objective, and that is this. An analog pedal board system just sounds better than the Line 6 Helix stuff. Now I know I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers here, but I think that you can never replace the live feel of an amp on stage. You know, your pedals plug to the amp and the amp just has that movement of air. And um, I've played at stages that are so loud that when I play my first chord, you know, the water in my eyes start to shimmer you know, or like the, I can hear the rushing of the wind behind my ears. And that is a feeling that you will never get with a Helix. I'm not saying the Helix is bad, but there's some things the Helix can't do, like recreating those live elements. And they are trying to compensate for this by introducing their FRFR systems, the full range flat response 
uh, power cap series. If you were to ask me which side of the fence I'm on regarding whether analog sounds better or, or the digital sounds better, I have to go with analog. It just does sound better and that's my personal opinion and my, that's my personal subjective opinion. So if you do feel otherwise, hey, that's a perfectly valid opinion of yours. So I've covered five reasons why you should go Helix and five reasons why you should go analog. What do you think? Let's get a conversation started. What makes you want to hold on to analog or what makes you want to hold on to the digital side of things? You know, these kind of conversations are really interesting to me and I'd really love to hear your input on this. Put them in the comment box below and let's get a conversation started. Well, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, queries or comments, please post them in the comment box and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. This is Justin signing off.